while I have it, why don't we talk about the planetary gear assembly? Because this, this is actually going to be the most, one of the most important parts of this. This on the inside is referred to as the sun gear. These on the outside, we've got four of them here, are referred to as the planetary gears. The planets revolve around the sun. And on the outside of all that is the ring gear. Now why is this important and how does this work? That's a very good question. And I'm hoping to explain this to you in the best way I know how. When I was talking about the clutches and the bands and everything else, they basically boil down to this, to give you torque multiplication within the, within the transmission. The engine is always spinning at, at a given speed. So you'll get 2,000 RPMs out of it, whatever, but, but let's say that for every rotation of the engine, that's one rotation. What happens inside the transmission and inside a planetary gear setup is the multiplication of that torque or the the manipulation of that torque to, to accommodate a given situation. Like, probably the best way I can describe it is, think about it as being on a 10-speed on a bicycle, and you want to go up a hill. Well, you don't want to be in the high gear where it's really difficult to pedal. You want to put it into a low gear so that the, the amount of force that you put on those pedals is not as great, and you climb the hill a lot easier. Well, the automatic transmission or any transmission pretty much does the same thing. Uh, and it does it through the use of many times planetary gear setups. Now, there are about a, as many different types of, of transmission configurations as there are different makes and models out there, but, but some of the principles are fairly basic, and this is one of them. So you have your sun gear, you have your planetary gears, and you have your ring gear. Now, depending upon what is rotating here, it says what the torque multiplication or what the gear ratio is. So, to put it simply, if all of these are locked together, just to start with, if all of these are locked together, then the planetary gears, the sun gear, and everything is all spinning at the same rate. Then there's, there's, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every time this thing spins, everything spins. Now, if just the sun gear is spinning, the planetary gears, as you can see, will walk around the outside. And that will cause the ring gear to react in a different way. Thus you get a different gear. So if the planetary gear, it's just the planetary gears that are moving on the inside, you get another different type of, of torque multiplication. Now if the ring gear is the only thing that's moving around the outside here, and the sun gear is the thing that's held, like if you're holding the sun gear, then that creates another setup to where there's a different amount of torque applied. So depending upon if you're spinning the ring gear, if you're spinning the planetary gears, or you're spinning the sun gear, let's see if I can do this. No, I can't, yeah, a little bit. Or if you're spinning the sun gear, you're gonna get a different gear ratio depending upon what is moving. But that's the basic principle of, of how you get different gears. Like third gear could be everything all moving at once. Second gear could be the sun gear being driven, which is this guy here, the sun gear being driven, and the ring gear being held. That could be second gear. And first gear could be that the planetary gears are driven and the other two are held. So, in essence, it depends on what clutch is act or band is active and what is being held and what is being driven, which gives you that torque multiplication, which gives you the different gears in an automatic transmission. That is probably the simplest way that I can break it down for you. Now we're gonna see these principles repeated throughout the transmission, as far as the, the mechanical side of things go. The hydraulic side of the automatic transmission is, you know, a whole other ball game because the hydraulics are what control all of this. So from the, you know, where, where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, with the planetary gear assemblies uh, and, and the clutch drums, it's hydraulic pressure that, that actuates all these things and tells these things when to engage or disengage. Here's our clutch. So whether it's a clutch 
or a band, it basically boils down to what is driven and what is held in the planetary gear assembly. Now, not all transmissions use planetary gears. They use different sets of gears, but um, you can see another set that's down inside of here. But I hope that gives you a, uh, a better idea of what we're looking at in here. And I'm just gonna take out the rest of this stuff, but for the most part, you've, you've pretty much seen everything that is the automatic transmission. Once again, I've got some snap rings that are holding things in that I need to remove. And here we have yet another planetary assembly. This one is splined to different parts. Um, so we have, we have two planetary assemblies within this transmission that basically account for all the gears that we get. And there's a, another clutch around the outside of this. If I remove this uh, snap ring here, I could get to that clutch. Another snap ring. More of those clutches. All these clutches actually look pretty good. When these are worn out, you'll see them, they'll just be burned up and rubbed away. And, and here's, here's the answer to your question of, if I don't change my transmission fluid for a really long time, what happens? Well, this material right here on the outside of this uh, clutch, as, as it wears, it will disintegrate and get into the fluid inside the transmission. And in essence, it will make the fluid a little bit thicker because it'll be carrying little bits of particulate matter that run through it. Now, say you've let, you haven't changed your transmission fluid for a very long time. Well, it's gonna have a lot of these particles in it. And that transmission fluid is, is gonna be a bit thicker. So everything, as far as the seals inside of here and everything inside the transmission with that thick fluid is working okay. Well, you get that thick fluid out of there and you get some nice thin fluid in there, it could slip past the seals that might be leaking a little bit, which are now leaking a lot because it doesn't have that thick fluid in there. But also when it goes to actuate things like this, it might be a little too slippery. So in essence, what might happen is, is you've got that thick fluid out of there and now you've got thin fluid in there and the transmission just can't handle it because there's just, it's just slipping past everything. So that's, that's one, of the, one of the dangers. If you, if you let your transmission fluid go for a really long time, and then you want to change it all of a sudden. Um, that's one of the reasons. So there could be lots of this clutch material embedded into the fluid. And as a result, that makes it so that the fluid will, will seal on the inside of the transmission. Get rid of that old fluid and put new fluid in there that can basically slip past all this stuff that's, that's worn out. Well, the loss of pressure equals the transmission starts to slip. And then you end up putting a transmission in. And these are just repeated over and over again. Okay, that clutch has all been removed. As you can see, they stack up quite a bit. And once again, all this stuff is there because it's splined to these different clutches and things to basically activate the different components of the planetary gear assembly. You know what, I bet you there's access on the other side and I need to, to get to the rest of this from the other side. I'm gonna see if I can pull this up out of here now. I'm thinking this might be the same situation. I'm thinking I gotta flip this whole thing over and uh, access the other side to, to get to the rest of these components. That's getting messy. Was prepared for that. Just gonna tap this off with a mallet. Yay, and you know what? I'm probably not 
gonna take these off. There's, there's really nothing in here. This is just the back side of this case. Sometimes these are left hand threads, so you have to be careful. I wanna see if I got a socket that's big enough. But the, the reason why I'm hesitant is because I'm wondering if you need to use a puller to get these gears off. Uh, Cause if you do, I'm not sure that I have one that's gonna work. So we may just move on to the valve body if I'm not able to do that. In fact, I think we'll just do that. But these are, these are how those two shafts are connected in the back there. Uh, and there's a gear ratio between these two things. Everything, everything about this automatic transmission is there to create mechanical advantage. It's there to take the power that the engine produces, multiply its torque, and get you down the road efficiently. It also provides an overdrive in this case, since it's, it's four speed. An overdrive basically means that instead of the one revolution of the crankshaft of the engine equating to one revolution at, inside the transmission and at the wheels, it can actually multiply that up above a one-to-one -one ratio. And it's not usually a whole lot. It's just like, usually like a little bit, like, like 0.4 something overdrive. So it's only a little bit, but that means for every revolution of the crankshaft of the engine, the transmission is actually spinning like 0.1.4 or a 0.4 more than it would without it. So instead of it just being one to one, the transmission actually gets one more or a little bit more of a revolution out of it. So, and that's created by the gears, just like you do when you're riding that 10 speed bike. So when you get into the higher gears, you don't have to pedal as much, but you're still going really fast. The transmission does the exact same thing. The engine spins at the same rate. Like say you're cruising down the highway at 3000 RPM. Well, that's all the engine's doing. The transmission's doing the rest, multiplying the torque, getting it to the wheels and getting you down the road at speed. So the transmission, you know, basically manages the power coming out of the engine. It also provides a reverse gear. That's something else I should really mention is that in addition to multiplying torque, the transmission also provides a reverse gear. So you can back the thing up and get it out of a tight spot if you need to. All right. It does look like I have a socket that might work. Here's a little trick to keep uh, gears from spinning. Just take a rag and put it in between. This works on differentials really well too. But if it's trying to spin, it'll suck the rag in and it won't hurt the rag, or it won't hurt the gears. Who cares about the rag? But it'll, it'll bind the gears up to where they won't be able to move. You don't, you don't want to pry up in here. Um, you really should get a puller and pull this off of here. But since the uh, shaft fell out of the inside of this, let's flip it over and see what we got. This is what we got. This is what fell out. Spline to the inside in there. And I don't know if we'll get this or not. I think we're gonna to have to use that puller to remove this. So, in the interest of not making this video so dang long that you're gonna completely lose interest, I've showed you the basics. For now, let's uh, turn our attention to the valve body. So if the pump is the heart of the automatic transmission, the valve body is the brains. And the valve body basically directs traffic. It directs fluid to all those different components that I showed you. It directs fluid to the clutches, it directs fluid to the bands, and a myriad of other places in order to operate the transmission. So this is like the nerve center, the hydraulic nerve center. And you can see in here that we also have uh, a wiring harness which is connected to different solenoids which also um, work the automatic transmission. Hard to do one-handed. <laughs> but these solenoids will activate and as they do they will allow fluid to pass through different parts of the valve body which in turn go out and drive other things uh, in the transmission. But here's our manual valve again. So let's Let's watch inside and see what it does. It goes all the way through the shaft, over through here, 
And this, what you're looking at coming in and out right here is the main valve. And this tells the valve body what gear you're in, whether it be park, reverse, neutral, drive, low, second, whatever. And this little spring-loaded thing here holds that into place. So every time you're moving your gear selector inside your car, there's a shaft that goes all the way through here and works this manual valve. And it takes the pressure that comes, well, it takes the volume that comes from the pump and then directs it through different areas inside the valve body. And let's, uh, let's get this out of here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. It's kind of cool. It's almost like an ant farm. Now I know what this is. This is the connector for these different solenoids is all that is. So each one of these solenoids is single wire. I'm assuming it grounds inside the transmission. So each one of them gets sent power. This is a three terminal plug right here. So that will tell, that the computer will tell uh, the transmission what gear to be in based on that. Uh, and right here is the transmission filter and this is where the fluid gets sucked up into it. But I'm gonna take this off and take off uh, the, the valve body components and we'll get a look at them. There's our filter assembly and after, after it goes through the filter, which you can kind of see right there, comes out through the other side and then uh, gets pulled up into the pump to be uh, moved around. Okay, now that the compressor's turned off and we've got all our fasteners loosened up, I'm going to begin to show you what's inside the valve body. And you can see in here that it's just, here's a gasket and a plate. And I'm being careful because, like, sometimes there's little check balls and things like that that are in here. And if they fall out, you may have a really hard time figuring out where they went. In fact, there's a spring that might go to something important right there. And that's, that's basically, in essence, the essence of the valve body is, is these little passages here. Almost looks like an ant farm, doesn't it? Well, the idea is, as you can see, here's, here are those solenoids. And inside the valve body are valves. And I hope you can see here. See how that moves? And all of them should have, like, some movement like that. Some are, yeah, some have some spring pressure on the inside of them. But in essence, each one of these valves represents a gear or some action inside the transmission, whether it's the torque converter locking up or something like that. And sometimes these valves will stick inside the valve body, and when they do, um, they don't allow pressure to go to different places. In fact, that's the problem with uh, many of the Honda transmissions, uh, the V6 transmissions, is these valves get stuck inside the valve body and don't allow the transmission to shift properly. But you can actually pull these valves out, clean them, clean the bores uh, that they're in. But I, you can even see as I'm moving this, the, the different fluid and how, or the fluid and how it's redirected to different passages. Like when this opens up, perhaps it directs fluid down to a different part of the transmission and then cause, causes second gear to activate. Uh, let's see, we've got another big one over here. Can't move that one as easily. This, this is just repeated. I'm gonna pull out the rest of this assembly, but this, this philosophy, this, this, what's happening here is just repeated throughout the valve body. And if you look down here, you'll see this is the other end of that throttle cable. There's a throttle cable here. So watch what I pull on it. And that helps direct a pressure inside the transmission to help oppose these valves. Like, a lot of times inside this valve body, there's opposing forces. There's like one pressure pushing on the valve in one direction, and then another pressure pushing on the valve in the opposite direction. And once one pressure wins out, then something happens. Like 
perhaps you switch to the next gear, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and then you have, um, it looks like maybe an accumulator in here or something. You have different things that, that help cushion the apply so that it's not like when, when it goes into second gear, instead of it just going like really hard, it's got like these sometimes hydraulic cushions or accumulators that are used to help soften the blow when, when gears are switched. So I will uh, endeavor to remove the rest of this valve body and then uh, we just may be done with this dissection. Okay, the compressor kicked off and uh, I've got all these fasteners loose and I'm just gonna pull this uh, part of the valve body assembly right on up off of here if I can. It looks like I can. Looks like I'll have to disconnect that throttle cable. Uh, there we go. Yay! And look, another one of those check balls that I was telling you about that uh, you'll find in here. I'm going to set this to the side for a moment. And we'll just talk a bit about these accumulators. And accumulators are almost, think of them like shock absorbers. Like I said, if, if something is applied or disengaged, these things are there to just sort of cushion that apply. So once, and they also have O-rings and things that help seal them and springs. But uh, this one has what looks like a set of three and you can actually see the hydraulic pressure at work here on these. Um, and once again, there's that shaft for that manual valve. But we have we have pretty much stripped this down to nothing. As you can see here. Yeah. Let's uh, take one last look at that valve body and we'll wrap this video up. Now that we got that pesky transmission out of the way. Here's a valve. The manual valve uh, that we spoke about before. And <clears throat> fits into the bore. These things need to move nice and smoothly, because if they don't, well, we talked about what could possibly happen. And you also saw uh, that little check ball that was there. But now, we have uh, what looks like another set of valves down here. Being somewhat careful, because this transmission really doesn't look all that bad. In fact, I believe I've found the problem, and I'll show it to you here in a second. Okay. And here we go with a couple of those uh, balls here. These aren't even metal. These look plastic. These check balls. That's interesting. It's the first time I've seen plastic ones. Uh, but they, wh why are those little balls there? Well, they're, they're check balls. So if fluid is going in one direction and you, and you want it to not flow in the opposite direction, and you can even see down inside here where there's a couple of them that are just sort of nested in here. Um, they, they help seal off a flow in different areas. And I bet I can almost figure out where some of these go just by looking at how this, this whole thing is configured. But once again, you're looking at all these little valves that move inside this bore. Here's that manual valve, like when you move the gear selector. Here's the uh, throttle valve. You can see this push in and out. There's, it's living down inside here. That's it. I mean, you're, you're looking at everything that is an automatic transmission. Now, what do I think was wrong with, what do I think was wrong with this? Well, I think we're looking at it here. See how this one's kind of discolored? this clutch as compared to both of these are clutches and you can see how one is really discolored and looks like it's all chunky now now I don't know if that was a result of um, it not getting the proper fluid or the clutch just wore out but I bet that pretty much this and maybe going through the valve body to make sure everything moves correctly is all that we'll need to do Yeah, look at that. I would say that's our 
This is our point of failure. Yeah, there you go. You're looking at burned up clutches. And a lot of times this, this is the reason for the failure of the transmission is because these clutches, you shouldn't see metal here. You should see this friction material. See? You can see how you don't see any friction material here. Without that friction material, there goes that gear, which this is probably second gear clutch. But this would be what a good one looks like. And this would be what an overheated, messed up one looks like. And you can certainly see the difference. So if I, if I were to get in here, I, I would probably just go ahead and replace this clutch pack and it'd probably be fine. That's kind of why I'm trying to be nice to these parts now that I see that this transmission isn't completely trashed. Uh, it still may be salvageable by replacing these clutch discs. All right, automatic transmissions. There's quite a bit to it, isn't there? And I know that this was just a brief overview, but that's all it was meant to be, sort of a dissection. Honestly, my knowledge of automatic transmissions goes back to pff, almost 20 years ago when I was in school. That's the only place I ever spent any real time rebuilding them. Since then, it's just been transmissions bad. I'm gonna swap it out with a new one. And that's honestly what I suggest you do. Uh, unless you've got advanced mechanical experience and also uh, specialized tools and equipment that are used to service automatic transmissions, it's not likely you're gonna be successful in repairing them. I, I'm, I'm gonna say that, that you're better off going with something that's been remanufactured. Re already and that's that's going to ensure probably the best results however if you're curious about what's inside and what goes bad well i hope this video gave you some insight to that and uh i hope it was uh, also entertaining uh because it certainly was for me because i love taking stuff like this apart and i've always i've always found automatic transmissions to be fascinating uh, if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguide.com and type in a couple of keywords to our search function uh, if you don't find an answer there, uh, feel free to sign up for our forum. It's completely free. All you need is an email address, and we will try to help you there over at the Stay Dirty Lounge. If you just want to connect with Eric the Car Guy, you can find me at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I will close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I will see you next time.